Hi, welcome to the National Quiz Choice Online News. And today's guest we have is Miss Kim, and uh, she's uh, from uh, LA, and she has a restaurant uh, with her husband. And uh, coming from a Vietnamese perspective, um, you know, Miss Kim, thank you for joining us. Please tell us more about the Vietnamese cuisine today. You know, uh, especially street food, and where is it going? And uh, how and where is Vietnam going with uh, the street food as well? Though is the culture disappearing? Well, um, I, I think Vietnamese food in the United States is, is has gained a lot of popularity, and so there are a lot of Vietnamese um, restaurants. But people's knowledge of Vietnamese food in the United States is still quite narrow. I think, other than uh, pho and, and some rice dishes here and there, um, the scope of our understanding of Vietnamese food is is again, um, I think, something that needs to grow. So with respect to Vietnamese street food in Vietnam, in our last trip to Vietnam, we were just blown away by the vibrancy of uh, the street food culture and just how delicious all the food is. And uh, Vo Quoc was just speaking about how each year you are losing 10 to 15 very traditional street food dishes simply because um, hawkers are being shut down by the police um, or you know and 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 that to me is, is such a shame um, because like Vok Quoc said the best food in Vietnam is on the street and we are starting to get to know the street food of Vietnam and how how good it is but but like you know Vok Quoc was saying people aren't necessarily cooking that food the younger generation isn't cooking that food anymore so his effort to gather all the recipes and all the secrets to um, educate people um, one of the things that he was talking about was getting together all of the orphans and and the youth to train them to cook I think that with efforts conservation efforts and preservation efforts like this Vietnam's food and its legacy will continue with the youth and I think there's a lot of opportunity there um, in terms of preserving street food, especially in the way that individuals like Vaok is doing. Now, uh, on your part, Ms. Kim, uh, what are you going to do about trying to uh, capture all the old essence of street food from Vietnam? Uh, is there any movement that you are creating to encourage more people? And uh, Are you gathering all these, all these recipes uh, to preserve it at, at the same time? And do you have any plans to create a cookbook of Vietnam, on Vietnamese cuisine? <laughs> Well, my husband and I opened the Spice Table first to introduce the flavors of Southeast Asia to the broader American audience because like I said, um, the American palate um, and, and knowledge of Southeast Asian cuisine is still very limited. What it has turned into, actually, is a quest to continue and preserve our our, our cultural heritage in our food, and um, which is why Brian and I are here. We're here because we want to learn from people like Vokuk and Sito and all of those vendors out there, and we want to learn how to cook these dishes and then bring it back to the United States and educate people and broaden their palates. Um, I think that Yes, this is part of a movement. This is not a movement that we've created, but I think Bryant, um, as a chef, represents a new generation of chefs that have gone to culinary school, have cooked at some of the finest establishments in the United States, Danielle, um, Pizzeria Moza, and now returning to their roots and cooking food that is closest to their hearts. And so as we know, when we do things that are closest to our hearts, that is when when the food really thrives and 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 is presented in an honest, um, honest way. Now, do you have any plans, Miss Kim, uh, to also conduct maybe master classes or cooking classes as well on Vietnamese cuisine in the United States? Well, I have to say, I am not a chef by training. I am a home cook, and I work, work very closely with my husband in tasting and testing everything. And so, I would leave the cooking to him. And um, what we've done when we travel to Singapore and Vietnam is we eat about 
30, 40 times a day and we, we try to pick up on cooking techniques and the flavors and then we go into the kitchen together where he actually executes and I help him taste. So that's actually how our co collaboration works. Okay, uh, with that collaboration, I'm sure that you guys will probably produce a cookbook or recipes and even master classes. Uh, with him as well, I suppose. Yes, I, 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 I think you know there are a couple of things in the works, and I don't want to reveal too much right now. <laughs> I don't want to jinx it, you know. But, um, but yes, I think our participation here is just the beginning, and we really hope to be increasingly involved in what Cito is trying to do here. And, and you know, I've just become friends with Vo Quoc and, and, and we're going to be meeting up in Vietnam and, and sharing and learning how to cook together. Um, so this is, this is just the very beginning. Well, once again, thank you, Ms. Kim, for joining us here at the National Foods Choice. And folks, thank you for joining me. I'm Robin Steinberg, and uh, have a good week ahead.